Is English really important in the world today? I know, I know you think that because I'm a native speaker of English, that I believe English is vital and indispensable around the world today. Well, you may be right. I can't be completely objective as I only speak two languages fluently and another passably, and even that one is quite arguable. As such, I realize I can't make any true comparisons, but English is often considered to have one of the richest vocabularies in the world, and perhaps one of the most confusing as we often see that one word can have many different uses and meanings. For example, one report that I will reference in the uh, description below estimates that the word run could be used in as many as 645 different ways. Consequently, it might seem like an impossible task to become fluent. Let me first say that most people, yes, that means native speakers as well, do not use the vast majority of the words in the English language. Lexicographer and well-known and beloved TV personality Susie Dent estimates that most native speakers will have an active vocabulary, in other words, the vocabulary that you would use on a regular basis, of about 20,000 words or so. And a passive vocabulary, these are words that you can recognize and know how to use, of about 40,000. English is a mishmash of a number of different languages. We've got the Scandinavian Viking language that came to the north, we had the Norman French from the south, the Anglo Saxon Germanic language from the east. And all of these have had a greater or lesser influence in, in different parts of the country, or even the globe for that matter. No one, even professors of English at the most prestigious universities or schools, can possibly defend English spelling or pronunciation as sensible. A number of Americans in the 19th century attempted to impose some semblance of normalcy on the language by changing the RE endings to ER, like in meter or theater, or making the ISE at the end of words into IZE or IZE, like sympathize, maximize, etc or even untangling this crazy O-U-G-H word like through. And no, I'm not anti-American in terms of spelling or attempting to put some order to the language. I just think it's a little anti-democratic or anti-free speech to tell people how to say or spell or pronounce things. Go freedom! The confusing spelling wasn't helped by the proliferation of words by well-known English and American authors who wrote words in the way they pronounced them. This was undermined further by the incredible variety of regional accents and consequently pronunciations. Then we come to the introduction of the printing press in England brought into the country by William Caxton in the uh, 15th century, which standardized spelling much more, but at the same time, the professional Belgian printers that came over with him put their own spin, their own influence on how English words should be spelt. English is so flexible, in fact, that there is no restriction on inventing new words. Every year, 4,000 new words are added to the Oxford English Dictionary. Shakespeare himself is thought to have coined about 1,700 words, and users around the world are free to make up words that may gain popularity or turn viral. The word selfie is said to have been invented in Australia in 2002. 
the Australians just love to put IE on the end of words like Aussie for Australian, Barbie for barbecue, Brekkie for breakfast and many more. English is no longer and probably never has been under the sole dominion of the English or native speakers and as such have become, has become the, the property of the world. So just how important is English in the world nowadays to answer the original question? Well, I think it is still just as important or relevant as it has been for the last 50 years or so. Although now with the advancement in technology and instant translators, there may be less need for it in the, in the future, particularly for tourists. Yet, I believe that it still remains important in the business world and the hospitality industry itself. Just a quick little story to finish off and to underline my point. I was once working as a barman in a hotel where we were hosting convention. There were people from Britain and Norway. And uh, because of the pronunciation, it was so easy to tell them apart. It was the Norwegians who spoke English so beautifully and more correctly than their British counterparts that they were a dead giveaway. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it or even learned something from it. If you did enjoy it, why not give us a like and perhaps subscribe if you want to hear more videos like this. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.